and welcome to Tech to Tech presented by Kaizen, where we will explore common cleaning questions and answers. Let's get started. I would like to introduce Kaizen's own Scott Kane. Thanks, William. And thanks, everybody, for taking a few minutes out of your time for today's Tech to Tech. We appreciate just a few minutes of your time as we talk about a, a little topic just while you're letting your coffee cool off. So today we're going to talk about wire bonding, kind of some of the basics of wire bonding and the basics of cleaning and wire bond. Um, I, my name is Scott Kane. I am the key account manager for North America and Europe and our advanced packaging side of the business. And Jason Chan is our global product manager out of Taiwan. And so just letting you know initially that we've got you covered no matter where you are in the world, we can come and assist and walk through these products processes with you. So I'd like to say thanks for Jason for all his help and let's get into it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk initially about what is wire bonding? What is that process? And then we're gonna have an overview of kind of the cleaning side of the process. Then we're going to look real quick at kind of what the machines, the chemistry options are, do a few Q and A's, and then we'll have you out of here in 10, 15 minutes, um, hopefully with a little more knowledge in your, in your bank. So what is wire bonding? So if we take a look at this picture, well, this is kind of the crux of what wire bonding it is. And what we're really looking to do is establish an electrical connection between a silicon chip and the external leads of the semiconductor device. Using those very fine wire lines, they, and they may be made of copper, gold, aluminum, and there may be multiple materials in one. And so we always want to keep that in mind as well. And kind of the process, how that works is you have capillaries, right? They're little needles. And this machine is going to be doing this thousands of time every minute. But what happens is that needle comes down. It makes that initial bond. The one on that we're looking here across the top is usually utilizing a gold wire and a wedge bond, but the concept is gonna be virtually the same. So that needle will come down, make that first bond, then it moves a little bit to the left and bends that down, and then comes up and makes the second bond that you can see on the, the square on the top right corner. It's going to be doing this again and again. These are very complex machines. They're going to be utilizing ball bonds, uh, stitch bonds, or wedge bonds. From a cleaning point of view, that's not very important. What is the important thing is what all materials are involved. So this machine is going to take into consideration what the, the height differential is, how far it's going, how many bonds it has to do. But the long term of it, long and short of it is it'll look something like this that we look back at this picture so now when it's done that bond right we mentioned that there's ball bonds there's stitch bonds there's wedge bonds the wedge bonds were the one that we saw on the top of the last page again that's from a cleaning side that's not what's important but knowing that those bonds those different types of bonds are out there is important and it's knowing what kind of materials we're working with so what is this whole wire bonding process, right? We just saw that one little part, but where does that fit from when we bring a wafer in until it ships out of the door? So real quick, what happens is they take the entire wafer, it's gonna be sawed into a little bit of pieces, right? Then the solder paste is gonna be applied and then the dye bond. So that silicon dye is gonna be placed on top of the wafer. Then it's gonna go through a high temperature reflow oven maybe using nitrogen, maybe not. Then it's gonna to come to the sexiest part, everybody's favorite part, the cleaning portion. And we'll talk about the specifics of that in a moment. But the reason we're cleaning before we wire bond is we want to have a clean surface, right? We don't want, we don't go putting a bumper sticker on a dirty bumper. It's kind of the same concept. When we have that clean area, that bond's gonna connect really well. Then what's gonna happen, it's gonna go into mold. And so if you look at the picture in the upper left-hand corner, that blue portion, that's gonna be kind of the mold, right? It encapsulates it and keeps it protected. And when we do that, that's going, we need a clean surface for that mold to connect as well. Then it'll go into a post cure, right? So that mold is put there, then it has to cure up to make sure that it's all hard and, and complete. Then any sort of markings the customer wants to have on their parts are gonna be put on there. Then it'll be cut into the individualized 
they'll do some packing on that to make sure it's safe when it ships out and then it ships out. So this kind of gives you an overview of that entire process from when it comes into a wafer to what's actually out the door and where cleaning fits in, right? It's kind of about in the halfway point of the process. So some things to keep in mind with cleaning in the wire bond applications, these are relatively easy parts to clean. You know, we want to have everything dialed in, make sure we have the process dialed in, the chemistry correct, but there's not a lot of geographical concerns that we may have in other where we're trying to get under a, a low standoff BGA that may be four inches. Um, you know, these there's nothing in the way of these. We're not at there's relatively high standoffs, et cetera. So relatively, this is not the most complex uh, cleaning application. We, as I've mentioned, we need to worry about the substrates, right? We worry about what the wire is and what the substrate. Is it a copper? Is it a copper alloy? Is it an iron or an iron nickel alloy? Knowing this information will make sure that your cleaning process is dialed in the best it can. And why are we cleaning? We want to get that inorganic and organic fluxes off of there. Any sort of sawdust remnants that are going to be there, that's going to affect how well it can bond and how well that molding can happen. Any of the passivation layers, we want to make sure those are protected and we want to make sure there's no oxidation, right? We don't want any sort of discoloration, delamination, delaminations on some of these materials. And, and so we'll look in a moment what that looks like. Now, historically, most of these applications are done in an inline ultrasonic. So instead of an ultrasonic that you may be familiar with more on like your stencil washing or the jeweler at the mall, right, where it's just a single chamber, this one's going to be an inline. So it'll have multiple chambers and this can be changed to have one or one or two washes or two or three rinsing and maybe a dry at the end. And each application may be a little bit different based off of how long it has to clean for, making sure that we're getting it rinsed off, which is just as important as cleaning on uh, the wash side. Um, but this can be set up in a couple different ways. Historically, these are going to be done at 40 kilohertz, but that can be changed based off of the number of machine, number of parts that you have inside of there, how fragile the parts are, how delicate they are, so on and so forth. That can change that. And then we're looking at a wash temperature of 50 to 55 degrees C. Historically, we're looking at 10 to 20 minutes of wash time. And then usually the rinse is going to be just ambient temperature. So what does it look like when it's not clean? Right. If we take a look at these four pictures, look at the left side to the right side. On the left side, we're looking at material metal compatibility issues where we may have discoloration or we're going to have corrosion with aluminum. If the process is not dialed in and it does not have a chemistry that can handle all the different materials, this is some of the stuff that can happen from a material point of view that's going to cause a failure in the field. We're also looking, when we look at the pictures on the right, this is partial cleaning, poor cleaning. So we have materials that work well together, but we don't have the process dialed in to make sure that everything's removed off of there. So we have a beautiful flat surface, clean surface for that wire bond to happen, and then the encapsulation process. So what we want to do is make sure we have everything dialed in for that. Then we look at, hey, what are the chemistry options? And there's a couple chemistry companies out there. Obviously, we, we feel that our products are the best. Um, but what you're looking at is, let's learn a little bit more about those applications. Do you have an ultrasonic? Do you have an inline? You know, and that's going to change. Are we going to go to a solvent or an aqueous based based off of the application? And this, you know, we want to have more time to dive into your exact application to learn which solution will be the best. But this just gives you kind of a little bit about that flow. And these are for the high lead processes. Then if we go to a lead free process, where we're looking at more of a, a lead frame. Is that going to go into an inline or an ultrasonic, right? Are we going to an aqueous or a solvent based? All these types of things come into this conversation to kind of learn what's best for your exact application. So kind of in conclusion, Wire bond, it's a critical process, you know, to build the semiconductors in this advanced packaging stack, but it's not the most complex application that we're going to see out there that you guys are probably seeing in the field. But what we do need to know is understand those crucial data points about the material, the machine, 
and the chemistry choice, that will lead to that reliable, repeatable process that we're looking for. So a couple of things, um, we get a couple of questions about this all the time. Just kind of want to put these out here. Hopefully these are useful for you. And obviously if there are any more questions that you have on this or any of our products, please reach out to us. We're happy to help. Um, one is, hey, you, there's a couple different ways to do that bonding. There's thermocompression, thermosonic, or ultrasonic bonding. Does this affect the cleaning process? No, this itself does not affect the cleaning process. Sometimes different materials are used in different types of bonding machines. And so what we need to do is make sure that we understand that and know that because that's going to affect what's going to happen in the wash. So the fact that there's different types of bonding, not as important. What those materials are, that's the important part. How does one confirm that a bonding process is clean? There's a multitude of different ways this is done. Some people just do it visually. Some people will do a shear test and make sure there's consistency on that shear test. Our lab has a number of different machines and, and processes that we can use additionally and can discuss that with you. And then in sometime in 2025, there will be another tech to tech kind of talking about what those testing uh, materials are and how that can be utilized to make sure that not only is your process going to work the first time, but it's going to work six, nine, 12 months later once we get it dialed in. Um, both ultrasonic and inline machines were mentioned. Why was a particular style machine chosen for the application? There's a couple different things with this. You may already have one of the machines, so let's start with that. Um, and then if you don't, we look at stuff like how many pieces you're trying to process in a given time, how much floor space you have, what's your CapEx that you're looking at and available for this. Um, are you going to be trying to do multiple projects within a particular machine? All these kind of variables can be there. And so what it's useful to do is have a conversation with the machine company and the chemistry company at the same time, or at least have similar conversations to make sure that you get it dialed in to what's really going to work best for your specific application in your facility. Kind of tying into that, look, just a reminder, we're here to help. Um, this is what both the chemistry suppliers and the machine manufacturers, this is what we know. Um, don't call us about an AOI. We're really not going to be able to help you too much on that. You've got experts for that. Um, one of the things, um, you know, the chemistry companies and the, the machine companies have laboratories where a lot of this stuff can be ran ahead of time. So if you're wondering what it looks like, how clean it's going to be, um, we can kind of work together on that, have parts either sent into the facility or bring them in run through that cleaning process, and then when you're looking at a drop-in, once it's actually on your floor, you'll know what your process times are. You'll know what the results that you're looking for, what the chemistry, what the concentration is, all your cost involved in that. Instead of having to do some of that work once it's in place, you can do it on the front end, and then it makes it real easy to implement. Or if you want to just evaluate what your current cleaning process is comparatively, that's another way that those labs can be assisted. And hey, by the way, we love talking about this stuff, so we're happy to help, happy to have a conversation, learn more about what you're looking for and how we can assist in that process. So hopefully your coffee's still warm. Hopefully you learned a little something and I appreciate you guys spending a few minutes with us and uh, have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks, Scott. Thank you guys for watching this Tech & Tech session. If you would like to discuss this topic further or have any questions not answered in the session, please contact your local Kaizen regional manager or send an email to tech, the number two, tech at kaizen.com. And we will have someone follow up with you as soon as possible. And if you like this video, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms for more expert cleaning content. content.